Okay, so uh, here we've got a rather larger question. Um, again, this is a die hybrid cross, so if you're not up to that yet, you need to watch a different video. And this is one where we've got a whole page of information and then some questions over here. So I do need to read it properly and it's a diagram. Mm. So, the fruit fly is a useful animal for studying genetics crosses. And we've got the life cycle of the fly here. So, um, males, females, sperm and eggs, a fertilised egg changes into a larva, which changes into a pupa, which emerges into an adult, and that takes about 10 days to go from pupa to adult. So, mating occurs and female lays fertilised eggs 24 hours. That's quite short, isn't it? And she lays between 80 and 200 eggs each female, so that's lots of offspring. We've got one day after ha after laying, molts twice and changes into a pupa six days. So let's just do a bit of adding up there. So we've got one day, and then we've got one day here, we've got six days there and ten days. So whole life cycle is taking 18 days. Okay. And they're teeny tiny. Okay. So that's, that's quite good then, isn't it? If they're teeny tiny, you can keep them in a nice small space. So, um, turn to the question now. Using information, information from the diagram, so that's the, what I'm going to be looking at, the diagram. Three ways, one, two, three, in which the f fruit fly is useful. Why do we use fruit flies is kind of what they're asking there. So, uh, what do we know? 80 and 200 eggs, so we get large numbers of offspring. Large numbers of offspring. Produced. Uh, what else can we say? Short life cycle, 30, 18 days. Okay. Short life cycle. So it's eighteen. All right, it's ten days. Now it takes twenty-four hours. All right. Okay. So yes, eighteen days uh, of eighteen days. produce offspring. So there's lots of them and it only takes a short time. And then what else have we got in the diagram? This one's going to get a bit more tricky, isn't it? So, um, well, we could go for uh, the fact that they look different. Males and females easy to distinguish, or we could go for the fact that it's half a millimetre, four and a half millimetres, three millimetres, and two millimetres, so they're small. Uh, I think I'm going to go for small, so uh, small organisms. So, not much space. Well, you could ask Dr. Schofield how much space he needs for his guinea pigs. Small organisms, so not much space required. If you're breeding guinea pigs, you need a lot of cages. Okay, so that's my three three reasons. <coughs> uh, right, okay, so in fruit flies, the allele for grey body colour Big G, dominant, to the allele for black, body, little g. And normal wings, big N, dominant, over the vestigial, which are little n. A cross between a grey-bodied, normal-winged fly and a black-bodied, vestigial-winged fly. So, ooh, 
for a black bodied residual wing is going to be little g, little g, little n, little n. And my grey body, um, that has to be have at least one big G and at least one big N. Well, we don't know what the other one is. don't know whether it's homozygous or heterozygous. So we've got the following offspring. We've got grey-bodied, normal-winged, grey-bodied and vestigial wing. Now that, mm, that tells me, so if this is vestigial winged, that will have at least one big G but it would have two little ends for the vestigial wing. One from this parent and one from this parent. So that's, again, little n. And then we've got black-bodied, normal-winged. So to get a black body, we'd have to have little g, little g. One from this parent and one from that parent. And then I can look at the ratio. 25, 26, 24, 27. I think that's a 1 to 1 to 1 to 1 ratio. So what do we need to answer now? Right. Give the genotype of the grey-bodied normal winged parent. So this is my grey-bodied normal winged and I've just worked out that it's big G, little g, big N, little n give the genotypes of the gametes which could be produced by one of the grey bodied vestigial winged offspring. Mm. Okay, so um, oh, I think I might have to do that cross actually just to sort that out and make sure that I know what I'm doing. I've got a bit of space down here so um, Oh, so this one is just going to be, even if I foil it, first, little g, little n, outside, little g, little n, inside, last. They're all the same. And then this one's going to be big g, big n, big g, little n, little g, big n, little g, little n. Okay, so I'm just going to do this cross really quickly. Um, big G, little G, big N, little N. So that would be grey normal. That's my grey vestigial. Oh, that's the one I want. So the genotypes of the gametes, foil it, big G, big N, little n, sorry, and uh, big G, little n is the same, little G, little n, little G, little n. Grey, grey bodied, vestigial winged. Okay, yeah, good. And I could do the rest of the cross, but I'm not going to. So, what ratio would you expect in the offspring if the grey-bodied normal wing parent, oh Lord, had been crossed with a fly of the same genotype? So here, grey-bodied normal wing parent, that's this one. So that would be big G, little g, big N, little n, crossed with big G, little g same genotype. So now I've got my two heterozygous crossed, so I would expect 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. And I don't know where to put my phenotypes in as well. I think I might just for the... so that would be grey, normal, to grey, vestigial to black normal to black vestigial and then I'm, I'm pretty sure then I'll have hit the marks and I don't really want the examiner to be looking at all my workings out so I'm just going to put my lines through there and I'll put the lines through this I don't want them to mark that 
Okay. Laughing. <laughs>